Hello, and welcome to the Movie Universe. I'm your host, Movie Fan. Today, I'll be talking about Power Rangers The Lost Episode. What is the Lost Episode, you might ask? Well, it's basically the original pilot episode that they were going to go with before they decided to do a whole rewrite. As we all know, just about every series has a Lost Episode. You know, because they always work on an idea, then they show it to the rest of the crew, you know, the producers, the directors, and the sponsors. And more often than not, with a pilot episode, they often look at it and go, Eh, let's redo it. We could do better than that. And they usually do. Usually, you never see that unaired pilot episode. But then, back in 1999, during that god-awful Power Rangers Lost Galaxy, they decided to show this as a weekend special. And it was special, too. Because it was actually hosted by the original Red Ranger himself, Austin St. John. They had a huge promotional on it. I still remember the commercials like it was yesterday. And when the Lost episode premiered, to my surprise, not only did we get Austin St. John, the original Red Ranger, we got Walter Emmanuel Jones, the original Black Ranger, hosting it with him. This was a big moment for fans everywhere because Walter had not been seen since he left the show. And I'll tell you, those two were great hosts. They talked about the history of Power Rangers up until that time within one minute. They also talked about where it had originated from, and they showed us some great clips throughout the years from every season that was up until that point. After they were done with all that, they show us the lost episode. It's basically the first episode entitled The Day of the Dumpster, but it is very different from the one that we all know. And boy, you could see that they had a lot of rewrites that they had to do because they had to change a few character profiles for instance, Kimberly was prissy and kind of stuck up, instead of being that sweet, innocent little girl that we all know and love. Even more surprising, we don't really have Bulk and Skull. We do have Paul Scherer, who plays Bulk, but we don't have Skull. In fact, we got a whole gang of punks. And believe it or not, the Power Rangers are actually beating them up. That is not the Power Rangers that we all know and love. Because, as we all remember, they would only use fighting as a last resort. And even then, when they dealt with Bulk and Skull, they never threw a punch at him. They always outmaneuvered him. So there's a big change right there. And when we first meet our Power Rangers, they're at a bowling alley instead of the famous Youth Center. Billy, of course, looked even more nerdy in this episode. And most notably, Trini was played by Audrey Dubois in this episode. I know I've said this before, and I'll remind everyone again. Audrey Dubois was originally chosen to play Trini Kwan, but then she asked for more money and was kicked off and replaced by Tui Trang. Audrey Dubois playing Trini in this episode is proof that Saban is not racist, because Audrey Dubois is Mexican, not Asian. Zordon was called Zoltar, and of course he looked like a very bad photocopy. Alpha 5 had a very different costume. And you remember the scene where he talks to the rangers about their powers and you see them just morph right before your eyes and you see the zords? Well, in this case, they morphed into actual dinosaurs instead. And I cannot forget that when Zoltar is talking about Power Rangers and saying how they are Power Rangers, Zack says, Yeah, right, and I'm a Ninja Turtle. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Even back then, they knew they were going to be competing with the Ninja Turtles. So, of course, I guess they felt they had to do that. But they did cut that out, though. Although I do kind of wish they had kept that, because that would have been hilarious. And believe it or not, they do not call the Morphers Morphers in this episode. They call them Transmorphers, which I suppose is accurate, but it just doesn't have that same awesome sound as Morphers does. And when they morph, it basically looks like this. Pterodactyl, Sabertooth Tiger, Mastodon, Triceratops, Tyrannosaurus. I think I can speak for everyone when I say that morphing sequence stinks, because we all know this morphing sequence is better. Dragonsaur, Mastodon, Pterodactyl, Triceratops. Oh, and you'll love this. The first monster they fight in this episode is King Sphinx. And he's not called King Sphinx in this. <laughs> Give me a minute here. Oh, boy. You're not going to believe me when I tell you this. He's actually called Fly Guy. <laughs> oh, my God. Fly Guy. 
Oh, man. Oh, jeez. That kills me. Fly guy. Of all the names they could have chosen for him. Oh, fly guy. <laughs> Sorry about that. But yeah, they decided to call him Fly Guy originally. Good thing they changed that to King Sphinx. Because as my reaction has made very clear, how can you take a name like that seriously? On a side note, points to Barbara Goodson for saying that line without laughing. After they defeat Fly Guy and decide to become Power Rangers, Austin says after five years and over 300 episodes, Power Rangers has captured the imagination of children around the world. So what's next? And Walter says, The only thing we know for sure is that whenever evil threatens the universe, you can bet that the Power Rangers will be there to save the day. And that's how the episode ends. I think we can all agree, it is definitely the greatest special to ever hit television back then. Come to think of it, it's the only Power Rangers special of its kind. I say that because there have been crossover episodes and anniversary episodes, which were very epic. But this one takes the cake because Austin and Walter host it, not to mention we get to see what could have been. And say to ourselves, thank God they changed it up. Because I'll tell you, if they did it like this, I don't think the show would have made it, even with all the awesome stock footage that came from Japan. If you want to see this episode, I'll put a link below so you can find it. I hope you take the time to watch it, and I hope you appreciate what they did just as much as I do. This is Movie Fan, signing off.